And for more, very pleased to be joined by Congressman Gregory Meeks. He serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thank you very much. Good being with you again. You know, the last time we talked, Congressman, uh, earlier, you were, if not in the undecided camp here, certainly leaning uh, in the no direction. I'm curious, after hearing the president last night, do you think he changed any minds? Did he change yours? I am undecided. I'm not going to say I'm leaning no, I'm leaning yes. I think that the president made some salient points. Uh, I think that the president has shown extreme courage and leadership. Uh, and, uh, uh, but I think he's also understands that the American people, he's not going to change polls and that's not, that was not what uh, his intent was. Uh, but we have a window of opportunity uh, and he's going to allow that window of opportunity to happen of trying to have a negotiated process uh, with the Russians, uh, which I think is tremendously important. And so we hope that uh, Secretary Kerry uh, in his uh, visit to Geneva uh, can come back with a deal, but we've got to verify it. Well, let's talk about that verification. Uh, is there going to be a timeline attached to this where uh, Assad's lied before, uh, God knows, that he'd have to give specific dates where they get complete access, uh, he's got to do complete tr transparency, and if not, the president said, you guys got to give me leverage, meaning you guys in Congress here, he's got to know the only reason he's talking now is the threat of attack Give me the green light when I ask for a vote here. It'll give me more leverage in making him uh, be as transparent as possible. And as I said, as far as my vote is concerned, you know, it's like being on a jury. I'm not, gonna, you know, you, you wait till everything is done. And we're not there yet. I don't know what the resolution would look like, et cetera. So I would have to see all of those things before I could tell you how I'm going to vote uh, ultimately. However, that being said, uh, the other concern that I've always had was us doing anything on a unilateral basis. And I think one or two things can occur here. Either the Russians can deliver and the Syrians will give up uh, their chemical weapons uh, and have it uh, under, under surveillance by an international uh, body, uh, which is again then the international community coming in, because uh, I've always said we needed the uh, inclusion of the international community or the international community will be able to see that the Russians and the Syrians are not for real, they're only stalling, and then they would be more forthright, I would hope, and join the United States with whatever action it's going to take. Because the United States, it has been my opinion from the beginning, and that has not changed, that they should not do a unilateral act. It should be a multilateral act, since a international norm was violated there should be an international response and not just a United States response. The President and Congressman spoke to that last night. I think the more compelling part of his address was that moral argument he laid out, talking about the dead kids here. And he said, listen, I'm the guy who wants to get us out of wars, not get into any of them. And while he said this definitely wouldn't have boots in the ground, he said, if not us, then who? The global community, they ducked on this and they punted it to us. And he said for those kids and more kids like them, if not for the U.S., then who looks out for them? What about that argument that if the international community won't be with us, can we really still walk away and basically not only leave those children left behind, but many others like them? Well, I think that we need to have an international response. Uh, and I think that the president uh, is trying to, and that's why I said even beforehand when he was talking to individuals uh, at the G20, uh, let's wait and see what happens when he gets back. I think that we've seen some progress and some things different uh, post the G20 than pre the G20. Uh, there's conversation that's going on now. Uh, I, now, one of the things that I know that the president says, means what he says and says what he means. Uh, and I think that's credible. He, uh, and I think that he's telling the American people the truth. He's not trying to hype a war. Uh, we've had that done before. So I admire him for that particular piece of leadership. But I think he would agree, and he does agree, that he's got, we have to do everything that we can uh, to make sure that there's an international response. As he said himself, it wasn't just a, there wasn't a, just a red line drawn on the United States of America. There was a red line that was crossed with reference to the international community. That be the case, everybody has to step up. Otherwise, we take the chance of isolating ourselves in the region. Now, and, and I, so I understand uh, uh, the president and his points. 
uh, and uh, but I, I'm hopeful that uh, as a result of, of of the threat, as he indicated, of the utilization of 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 of, of a military force, that the international community will step up uh, and say we're with you. You know, Congressman, I, obviously I don't have to remind you here of the importance of today and the anniversary of September 11th, and I'm curious. When you guys close the door and you're meeting with your colleagues on, um, in your committee, how much does 9-11 weigh on these kind of decisions and about some of the mistakes about Iraq and et cetera where people are just gun shy here because they felt they've been sold maybe a false bill of goods from before and also they don't know how it ends. How much does that overhang of Iraq and really September 11th really impact a lot of these choices that you guys have to make today, even if it's about something as different as Syria? It's tremendous. Um, you know, uh, I don't think that we necessarily would be where we are uh, if it had not been for Iraq. Uh, and that's why I give President Obama a lot of credit. Apparently, and it was clear now that we can see that the Iraq was a war that was hyped up. It wasn't there wasn't an imminent danger or an imminent threat as had been portrayed to us and uh, individuals uh, and members of Congress as well as the American people feel that uh, there was, uh, a, there was a, a hyped war to, to get the, us to get behind it. And so shame on me, shame on you if you fool me one time, shame on me if you fool me twice. And so the American people are now, uh, as a result, uh, one of the dot I's and cross T's to make sure that they're not having uh, a hyped situation again. And that's why I think that though I give the president a lot of credit that he's been very honest in the past. He said what we were going to do in Libya, we didn't do nothing more, nothing less. He said he was going to get Osama bin Laden, he did. He said he was going to put the bad guys on the run like Al Qaeda and he's done it, even though he's got criticisms from doing it with drones and other methods, but he's got rid of them. So he says what he means and he does what, I mean, he means what he says and he does what he means. Uh, and so uh, he has tremendous credibility <laughs> for me. Uh, that's why I appreciate his honesty in saying that he's not going to invade um, um, uh, uh, Syria. He's not trying to tip the balance. What he wants to do is to make them pay for utilizing chemical weapons so they don't utilize them again. That part I get. And I understand it because the, all of the evidence that I've seen shows clearly that the Syrians all did, in fact, use chemical weapons uh, and, uh, and did harm his people. But it crossed, and there's 186 uh, people as part of the, uh, the, 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 the anti-chemical weapons convention, and I just think we need more countries involved. Otherwise, the United States can isolate it itself. Somebody else can utilize it. And they say that, oh, nobody's going to step up but the United States. I think that's a danger. Congressman Meeks, as always, I appreciate a couple minutes. Thank you very much. My pleasure.